It comes down to a component of the diversification. So there's distributed generation, which are pockets of generation that allow that generation mix to be geographically diversified. So you end up at a point where you actually have power being generated where that load is being consumed. In the summertime, instead of having rolling blackouts or whatnot, if a quarter of the homes have solar modules on them, you probably won't have a blackout because the drain on the grid won't be as severe. Companies like Ford and GM started investing in the technology in the 80s and 90s because it made sense. It generated a return on investment and it addressed the largest usage of energy in their automotive facilities, which was ventilation heating. The diversity of your energy source makes sense for grid stability and as well as the diversity and stability of pricing. Energy prices are the most expensive during the day and that's where the sun shines the most and when solar generation occurs to the greatest extent especially for our generation as we kind of begin to transition away from using carbon intensive fossil fuels towards using cleaner, greener, renewable energy sources. I think that solar energy is going to be a really important part of the mix and is, a, is an important part of the mix today already. There is a community in Denmark of about 2,000 people and they are 100% renewable. They are very proud of it and their life quality hasn't diminished at all. So it just proves that it is possible. Our goal doesn't have to be to go 100% renewable, but it's not unthinkable that maybe a next generation does want to get to that point. There's nothing like the power of the sun. There's nothing like the power of the sun. There's nothing like the power of the sun. There's nothing. There's nothing. 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 There's absolutely nothing. There's nothing like the power of the sun. There's nothing like the power of the sun. There's nothing like the power of the sun.